let's go through all four of our properties so let's start with rohit garden which is uh, which is uh, essentially an our ancestral home an old fort that's been converted into a hotel uh, it's all about history over here uh, all the rooms are different because we've not messed around with the existing structure of the building we've just uh, repurposed the old building to accommodate the now hotel uh, so every room is different all rooms are hand painted uh, there are lots of photographs of the family on the walls uh, every photograph every building every corner has its own story and we as a family are still in residence here hi everyone welcome to now boarding a new travel podcast by me pail nair Today I'm in conversation with Avijit Singh. Avijit is the young owner of House of Rohit, which has four absolutely stunning and luxurious um, boutique hotels. Rohit is in Rajasthan, which is in India, um, and the House of Rohit has so much history behind it that I'm going to leave it to Avijit, of course, to. tell us um all about that so thank you so much um for chatting with me today avijit and um you're on my brand new show called now boarding a travel podcast so thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for having me on it's such an honor and it's so good to see you again after all these years absolutely and uh, looking forward to speaking with you great um and and, I, and you know i'm sort of looking forward to um understanding a little more about the history of rohit maybe that's where we should start from so if you could just very briefly um you know uh, tell us a little bit about um rohit and and your family and how you came about to to be a part of um of rohit uh so rohit has been our ancestral home uh, since 1622 so there's a lot of history to go back on there but uh, i will start from where our journey in hospitality began uh so rohit garden which is our biggest property and also our ancestral home was an old fort uh which post independence of india became a very large residence as it did no longer serve uh, any administrative purposes uh so our hospitality journey began as an experiment in 1990 where we started rohit garden with five rooms and uh, it's been a journey since then uh journey a learning journey for us we have grown over the years uh learning from on the job pretty much my parents my grandparents uh, and now i'm a third generation into the hospitality trade uh with my family uh and uh, it kind of snowballed from that five rooms way back when uh, when it was india was not really on travelers minds and that two properties off peak properties like ours which were outside the city so rohit garden is about 40 kilometers outside of jodhpur was uh, on everyone's last priority in the early 90s uh, from there it's kind of uh, it's been a learning process and it's been an adventure moving on uh, and growing uh, as uh, hoteliers ourselves and uh, watching uh, the interest of the world and the interest of the travelers from around the world and in india grow uh, and appreciate more properties like ours uh, then we fast forward to today where we now have four uh, each unique uh, boutique properties uh, each telling a different story and each offering a completely different experience wow that's amazing so how um, so it was your grandparents who first opened the doors of your private home uh for visitors right um as, as yes, so my 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 father and my uh, grandparents uh first we started with what became what has become our kind of usp our uh, one uh, a uh, kind of trump card that we had moving forward that made uh, the experience of staying with us uh, much more experiential as compared to certain city properties uh, which we call the village safari so it's a concept that was pioneered by my father especially and uh, it was the opportunity to give an insight to travelers from around the world into what life is like in western rural rajasthan 
so the idea was uh, he called it a village safari that was an interesting play on words because there's a little bit of wildlife uh, like the black buck and various uh, birds both migratory and indigenous but the main most interesting thing about what we did on this two to three hour drive that we took our guests on was to give them an opportunity to interact with the locals uh, more than anything uh, they got to see firsthand the way of life of western rajasthan learn a little more about the cultures the tradition uh, see up close various customs of the region uh, witness some ceremonies learn a little more about certain communities of this region like the bishnois and the paliwal brahmins and the kumars who are the potters uh, they all very distinct communities uh, all with their own unique quirks and this was and people loved it because this was the only opportunity they got to really experience uh, india outside of the hospitality bubble they would travel in because otherwise it would be monument to hotel uh, hotel to monument to hotel and this was the first chance they got to interact with someone who was outside the hospitality bubble and uh, really wasn't there to serve them so um now i want to ask you about like you said that you kind of uh, introduced this uh, for the traveler so that they could um experience um a life uh, in a village in a sort of rural part of rajasthan western rajasthan and also interact with the locals but my question to you is what was the um reaction from the locals were they sort of accepting of this because did they feel that um their privacy was getting invaded um how did they react to you know suddenly a bunch of people wanting to mingle with them so uh, first of all it was a lot easier for us to start something like this because of the relationship our family shared with uh, with the area uh, as i mentioned earlier my family has been here for the last 400 years uh, and uh, the concept really of privacy and personal space and uh, kind of uh, boundaries isn't so straight drawn in uh, rural india and especially was not back then uh, and even now i say not much has changed uh, it is not really a part of the culture to kind of have strict boundaries and no you can't come in here kind of thing communities in rural rajasthan are very accepting it doesn't it doesn't matter if they know you don't know you they would always be happy to uh, to have an interaction to welcome you into their homes uh, very often it happens when we have guests with us travelers with us who are we take on safari and uh, they deviate from the schedule because somebody has invited them into their home or a cup of tea or uh, to chat or something or the other or to show them something or meet their dog or meet their children so it's a very kind of open society and uh, people in rural india they love to interact uh, it is it is so ingrained in the culture here that uh, uh, it's almost like second nature and then of course uh, to keep such a practice sustained over a long period of time uh, we made sure that uh, to the homes we visited to the people we interacted it was beneficial to everyone so it was kind of taking everyone and moving together over over a sustained period of time do you provide employment uh, to the locals um, what are some of the things that you are enabling for um, the betterment of their life uh yes of course of course so 100% of our staff is uh, local which means from villages around rohit uh or 100% of them are from rajasthan 90% are from our district 10% from other parts of rajasthan but uh, we are very conscious that uh, the vast majority of our staff are all locals uh, because then they have a certain connect with you with us as a family and with the place that they're working with in uh, that an outsider could never have uh so that our employees aside uh we do of course have to grow with the region around us uh there is no kind of two ways about it that we can grow and not ignore our surroundings at the same time so 
as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Village Safari uh, is an insight for travelers into certain communities and tribes that you would not find in other parts of India also. Uh, but other than that, we do run a, a, a not-for-profit uh, to provide health care for uh, uh, the local communities and the underprivileged, uh, entirely funded by our guests uh, who come and stay with us. They are not poor people. Uh, they, they are living a healthy, happy life. Yeah. Uh, so rather than that, we encourage people to uh, uh, make a donation towards, uh, towards our charity, which we run on uh, contributions from our guests and provide specialized medical care, which always may not be easily available. Even local doctors cannot address certain things like uh, uh, treatments and consultation for epilepsy, uh, certain uh, uh, kind of complicated gyne uh, gynecology, gynecology problems, uh, uh, eye, uh, eye problems, dental issues, which your local physician cannot always consult 100% accurately on. Uh, so we do our uh, quarterly medical camp where we invite some of the top doctors in the country to come here, set up camp for a day or two and uh, do free consultation. Then we give free medication to all uh, the underprivileged who could not otherwise afford to travel to the bigger cities and get seek treatment for the same. Uh, and then of course, uh, it is also promotion of the way of life. Uh, not just uh, other than kind of giving back uh, monetarily or with services, it is uh, a way to keep their way of life alive. Uh, communities uh, are fast disappearing in India with uh, the kind of modernization of our country uh, and certain nuances are getting lost. So tourism is one way to keep uh, communities, certain art forms, certain crafts uh, and a certain way of life alive because people are interested and are willing to pay for seeing such a way of life and uh, the things that it involves. Um, so what is your understanding of ecotourism? So you leave whatever you go and see outside, you leave it as it is. And that helps it sustain itself. Uh, nature is self-sustaining. We need not, as long as we don't interfere. And like that, so is humanity. Uh, if you give it a certain incentive and you leave it be, uh, culture and traditions will remain and people will take pride in them. And do you think enough uh, is being done or there's enough awareness um, in Rajasthan? Let's just, you know, sort of be very specific because that's mm -hmm. where you're from. Um, yes. Is there enough being done? Is there enough awareness? Is there enough conservation, um, you know, in for your wildlife? I mean, we've talked about the people and it's great to hear uh, the kind of, uh, um, you know, the kind of, protection that um, protection of the heritage of the people or the traditions of the people um, is being sort of uh, uh, is being considered and is actually being um, being done but is it similar with uh, with wildlife and with you know all your co conservation areas? So let me let me start by telling you about uh, the Bishnoi community. Okay. So this is a very unique community, uh, which was founded back in the 14th century by their guru Jamboji, who laid down 29 rules of living life. Hence the name Bishnoi, if broken, beast and not means 20 and 9. So the, they follow these 29 diktats that their guru laid down uh, till today uh, to as kind of uh, the basis for leading their lives. Now, some of them are very simple, uh, like they're strict vegetarians. Uh, they don't uh, eat meat or eggs or anything like that. Uh, they live on their own farmland. Uh, some are very simple, like they have a bath before entering the kitchen every morning. Uh, they have a bath before their first meal. They throw a handful of grain to the birds every morning. The first four or five uh, breads or chapatis that are made in the house go to the dogs, the cats, and the cows. Uh, then some are more complex. 
uh, they would actively protect animals from being killed and trees from being cut, uh, even if it means using force to do it. Uh, they would actively protect the flora and fauna around them uh, because that is their way of life. They live life as one with nature uh, to the extent that they don't even cremate their dead. They bury their dead because they don't want to waste so much wood. They don't want to cut so much wood and waste it in the cremation. So they bury on their own farmland and they don't even mark the grave. Uh, so they're the community who got into the limelight when a famous Bollywood actor was caught hunting here, not too far from our, uh, from where we are. Um, I, I mean, so two things uh, before I leave you. Uh, one, of course, is um, I'd love to hear some unique, you know, maybe one or two unique features of um, each one of your four properties. That's mm -hmm. one. And question number two, of course, is very, very different. Um, how were you impacted during the pandemic? Let's go through all four of our properties. So let's start with Rohit Garden, which is, uh, which is uh, essentially an, our ancestral home, an old fort that's been converted into a hotel. Uh, it's all about history over here. Uh, all the rooms are different because we've not messed around with the existing structure of the building. We've just uh, repurposed the old building to accommodate the now hotel. Uh, so every room is different. All rooms are hand painted. Uh, there are lots of photographs of the family on the walls. Uh, every photograph, every building, every corner has its own story. And we as a family are still in residence here. So it, uh, it's all the more part of the experience. We meet all our guests who stay here, uh, share some story or the other with them. So uh, it's kind of really being welcomed into our home. Uh, it's a home before anything else, and we treat it as such. Then our second property is Mihirgarh, which is really our uh, kind of premier offering that we have. Now, Mihirgarh is built uh, on a sand dune. It's uh, only a nine suite property, uh, more catering to the high end luxury segment. Uh, oh, and it was not, is, uh, sorry, so it was not an existing fort? No, uh, no, it's, okay. a, it's a new building. It's okay. a new building. Okay. And uh, Mihirgarh is especially unique because it has been entirely built using local and sustainable materials and promoting local arts and crafts. So everything in the property from the bricks and mortar to the flowers that are put there and everything in between from your furniture, your textile, your artwork, your handicraft, uh, everything is sourced only from the city of Jodhpur and the areas surrounding Jodhpur. So it really is an homage to the art and craft of the region around Jodhpur. So it is a really special property as, as that goes. And uh, it's been recognized worldwide for that. It's uh, won uh, world's best boutique hotel thrice at the World Luxury Hotel Awards. Uh, so we're very grateful for that. And Lonely Planet has called Mihilgarh the world's most extraordinary hotel. Wow. Yes, yes. And uh, then the third property is our wilderness camp, which is a very basic kind of rugged camp. Uh, it's unique because it's seasonal and we have to build it entirely every season. So all the floors, all the outside areas, they're all plastered using cow dung and clay. So they're all made by hand and plastered and we have to redo it every year, but it's entirely sustainably built. It's, uh, there's no stonework there. There is no kind of brickwork. There is no concrete. It's entirely built using uh, uh, cow dung and clay plastering on the grounds. Uh, and the tents, of course, are temporary tents and we can take them off we only pitch them through the winter months because otherwise it's too hot. So we're just beginning operations now from the 1st of November for the camp. And then finally, our newest property was uh, used to be our house in Jodhpur. And uh, we've converted it into an eight-suite uh, luxury villa, uh, which again uh, tells the story of uh, the art and craft of Jodhpur, but from an urban perspective. So again, hand-painted walls, but there's a certain kind of urban refinement to it, as opposed to Mihirgarh, which highlights rural. Uh, the Rohit House in Jodhpur highlights 
the art and craft and finery that you find in urban Rajasthan. So that we just opened right before pandemic uh, in end of 2019. Yes. Okay. And uh, now coming to how the <laughs> pandemic has been for us. Yeah. Uh, it's been a very interesting experience. <clears throat> it's been difficult at times. Uh, it's been, it's forced us to rethink the way we do business. Uh, but there's, uh, we always try and find a silver lining. And the best part about the pandemic, if you can call it so, has been uh, that Indians have discovered their own country. So with uh, the borders shutting down and no flights going in, no coming in, no flights going out, uh, Indians uh, decided to start traveling within India. And uh, the discerning Indian traveler has finally <clears throat> come to appreciate that there are properties that they can visit and see in our country itself. Uh, like our property Mihirgarh, it's become extremely popular with the domestic traveler, uh, which pre-pandemic we used to work 99% on uh, uh, foreign travelers. Uh, we are now a year and a half, two years later, matching numbers to pre-pandemic with only domestic. So this will only pay up doubly in times to come, uh, which is not to say that the pandemic hasn't been challenging. It was extremely tough in the beginning. And the first year we had serious struggles, especially our property Rohitgarh uh, and our property in Jodhpur struggled greatly because uh, the budget segment did not have much disposable income to travel and so on and so forth. But there has definitely been a resurgence and uh, all our efforts during the pandemic, uh, I am confident will pay off doubly uh, when the borders open up again and our normal market returns. So thank you so much once again for, for being a part of. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you and uh, looking forward to welcoming you back here thank very, you. very soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abhijit. Mm -hmm. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Now Boarding, a travel podcast. Check out other episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. And of course, don't forget to share your thoughts with us. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes only on Now Boarding, a travel podcast.